Hi there, it's Suzanne from BMO. I'm an evangelist for Microsoft Modern Work. In this video, we will be covering the process for an email migration from GoDaddy to Microsoft 365. In any migration, preparation is key. You don't want to make mistakes. To help, we provided a checklist of things you must consider before migrating. I suggest downloading our ebook that contains the pre-migration preparation steps, the migration steps, and the post-migration steps so you can follow along and keep track of your progress. Okay, now that you've gone through the checklist and feel confident you can do this yourself, here's a high-level overview of the work you will need to perform for the migration. If at this point you're thinking, I'm totally confused, this is way too technical for me, or that you'd rather spend your time doing something else, we get it. After all, this is a one-time skill that you probably won't be performing again. If you'd prefer to hand off the responsibility to our BMO team, we are happy to take it from here. We deal in all things Microsoft, from migrations to cost-effective licensing options, compliance, cybersecurity, managed IT, Teams phone, and much more. If you're on the fence, head on over to our migration cost calendar on our website to help you do some cost benefit before you invest your time. Since you're still watching, I'm assuming you're a DIY tech person, so let's get started on the migration. So you've verified that you can log in to your DNS provider. You have backed up your zone records for your DNS. And now you are ready to prepare the Microsoft 365 destination tenant for the migration. First step would be number three, turn off the security defaults in the destination tenant. We will turn them back on when the migration is complete. Let's start setting up the destination tenant for the migration. I suggest you open an in private or incognito if you're in Chrome window so that your browser doesn't use your current saved credentials. Go to portal.office.com and if you save your credentials for both GoDaddy and the destination in a notepad that will help you quickly log in when prompted. Once signed in, you will open another tab and go to portal.azure.com. Click on the three lines, Azure Active Directory, and then scroll down to Properties. And then scroll down this page to the very bottom and click on Manage Security Defaults. These are currently set to No, but if they are set to Yes, you want to select No. The change will prompt you with a question, why? And you can select any of the possibilities that it provides. Then click Save. We've completed the first three steps. Now we are ready to add users and licenses in the destination tenant. To do this, we will go into the destination tenant, download a CSV file template, fill it out, and upload it again. Go to admin.microsoft.com on the destination tenant, users, active users. You're going to add multiple users. This could be done manually. 
but it is easier to upload a CSV file when you have a large list of users. You can download the file, uh, an example file, and it contains all the required information. I've already downloaded one and modified it. Here, it is important that you do not change the header row. The information that is required is the username, first name, last name, display name, and we'll do country or region. The username is important to have the this UPN correct. If you look, under domains, settings domains, you'll see your, we have the vanity domain already here in this example, but you will see the domain name that you will need to use in your spreadsheet. We have not moved the vanity domain over to your destination yet, so you must use the dot on Microsoft.com for the UPN. Now it's time to import the file. Browse for the file. Select the file that you created and wait for it to verify. If you do have errors, it will tell you what they are and it will also suggest how you can fix those errors. Next, it will ask you to assign licenses in the country that your tenant is. Uh, we're gonna pick United States and then choose the license that you purchased. And then you will add the users. If you have shared mailboxes that you need to migrate, and there's only a few of them, you'll probably need to set them up manually. You cannot import those using the template that we just uploaded. Go to ex admin, exchange admin, recipients, mailboxes, and then add a shared mailbox. Type in a mailbox display name, the email address that the shared mail will be directed to, Select the on Microsoft domain and create. Do this for every shared mailbox that you want to migrate. Moving on to step number five, set up application impersonation in the destination tenant. Use impersonation when you need to access multiple mailboxes and act as the mailbox owner. Impersonation will allow BitTitan to use the admin account you specify to access all user mailboxes without login credentials. Because BitTitan must access the mailboxes in the source and in the destination, you'll need to grant app impersonation rights to the admin account in both the source and destination tenants. We will perform this in step nine in the source tenant, the same process that we're going to complete now. Your admin account needs to contain the organization management role. It may already, but you can verify this or add it as you're verifying it, and I will show you how. Login to compliance.microsoft.com, the new purview experience. Go to permissions. And then you want to go into roles under Microsoft Purview Solutions. And you're basically searching for the organization management role, which it happens to be on top, but you could search here. Scroll down 
And under members, you're going to want to, re to add the admin account that you are currently logged in as. And then click done. Our admin account now has organization management role. We are ready to log into admin.exchange.microsoft.com. Go to roles, admin roles. And we're going to add a role group. And we're going to name it app impersonation. And click on next. And next we're going to select the roles to add to the app impersonation group. We're going to pick application impersonation, no space. Oops. There it is. And then click next. We're going to assign this again to the admin account that we are using. Do the migration. And then add role group. Note that this could take 35 to 45 minutes. You can use PowerShell if you prefer to assign app impersonation. Search for PowerShell, right click, and make sure you run it as administrator. We're going to run a list of commands. These are available in the ebook checklist as well as the blog. You can just copy and paste, and we suggest you do it one at a time to avoid errors. So I'm copying my first command. We're going to set the execution policy to be unrestricted. And then we're going to set the live credential to get credential. This will prompt us for credentials, and you can input the credentials for the destination tenant. When you perform this procedure, because you're going to have to do app impersonation on the GoDaddy source tenant, you would put the source tenant credentials in when prompted. I've saved both sets of credentials in a notepad to avoid confusion. So I have just copied and pasted the on Microsoft admin account and the password. We're going to create a new PowerShell session for exchange. We're going to import the session. Okay, we're good to go. Enable organization customization so that we can create the app impersonation rule. There's an error, but it's because it's already enabled. Copy and paste the command to run the app impersonation role assignment. And take note that you will need to replace this credential with the admin credential from your notepad.
and you can see the role has been assigned. Step six, change default message size restriction. We want to make sure the message size limits are high enough to accept the transfer of larger messages during the migration. Go to admin.exchange.microsoft.com, Mailboxes, Mailflow setting, Message size restriction. We're going to set to the maximum amount, 150 meg. and save. We have three more steps in the pre-cutover tasks in the GoDaddy tenant before we run the pre-stage migration and then the cutover. We are going to log into GoDaddy with a credential that has admin privileges on GoDaddy. We're going to assume this is the GoDaddy tenant, even though I am not working on a GoDaddy tenant, but just know that the next three steps will be on the GoDaddy tenant. We're going to go to portal.azure.com. And the goal here is to find the account that is the admin account that has the net a bunch of numbers dot on Microsoft.com as the domain. We're going to reset the password on it. We're going to document that. And then from then on, we're going to log in with those credentials. Remember that we're eventually ripping the vanity domain, your custom domain away from GoDaddy and putting it on the new tenant. So you'll be using these admin credentials that we're setting now from that point on. So the goal here is to find that user. Now because I'm not on the GoDaddy tenant, we'll just pretend, but you're going to look for the admin and it'll say at, and then this will say net, and then it'll be a bunch of numbers dot on Microsoft.com. When you find that, you're going to go into the account and reset the password. I'm not going to do that here. Go ahead and do that. And then once it shows you the password, copy it to the clipboard. I suggest doing like a notepad real quick, putting the information for the account name and the password into the notepad and just saving it on your desktop. You're going to want to sign out of this in private session, open a new one. And then when prompted for your credentials, use the ones you saved in the notepad. So your login will look something like this. And you had the temporary password in the notepad. And when you click on next, it will ask you to reset the password, reset it to something that you'll remember. Copy that into your notepad if you won't remember it. From now on, you're going to be signing in with those credentials to do the rest of the tasks. You'll also be using those credentials when you set up BitTitan. It asks you for the source credentials. So those will be the credentials you'll be using. This plus the password you set. So we're logged in as the tenant admin on GoDaddy. And now we're going to turn off the security defaults in the source code daddy tenant, as well as enable the app impersonation role. You've already performed these steps in your destination tenant. So I'm going to go through them quickly. You're going to go to portal.azure.com, Azure Active Directory. Properties, 
scroll down, manage security defaults, and make sure it says no. To enable app impersonation, go to admin.exchange.microsoft.com, roles, admin roles, add a role group, app impersonation, And then you're going to search for application impersonation all together. Next, you're going to search for the admin account that you're logged in as. And then you're going to add that to the role. So if for some reason you're unable to add the app impersonation role, you get an error. You may need to go back and follow the instructions for adding the organization management role that we did previously in the destination tenant and try it again. Or you can run the PowerShell script that I gave you in step five using the GoDaddy admin credentials in the script. We've completed all the pre-cutover tasks in GoDaddy and in the destination tenant. We're ready to move on to the pre-stage migration pass. So how this is going to work is we're going to do a multi-pass migration strategy where in the pre-stage we move over a lot of the old email in this pass. And then once we do the MX record cutover, we will run the full migration pass. And then when that runs, it will take the remaining of the email, latest email, all the remaining mailbox items, calendars, contacts, tasks, etc. In the pre-stage pass, your only option is to take mail and you can specify the number of days. And then finally, if there's some time in between the DNS updating your M MX record, you can run the full migration pass a few more times or one more time, and that will get the Delta changes for you so that no mail is missed. If you don't already have a BitTitan account, go to bittitan.com and register for one. You pay when you actually do the migration. You have to purchase licenses at the point you're ready to migrate. So log into BitTitan. And create a project. Select mailbox project because we are just doing mailboxes only. Name it something meaningful. And then add a new customer. I've already added one. But you would put the primary email domain, that's your vanity domain. Put your company name and save. I've already created one, so I'm just going to pick it. Next step, you must identify the endpoint. And notice this is your source endpoint. So this will be your GoDaddy endpoint name. Name it something meaningful. And select Microsoft 365. And you're going to provide the credentials. The credentials will look something like this. The admin at net some numbers dot on Microsoft dot com. You should have already copied that into your notepad. So just reference that and the password 
and then click on Add. Okay, we're ready to set up the endpoint in the destination tenant. Same concept, add a new one. Endpoint type, Microsoft 365, provide credentials. Again, really handy to keep these in a notepad. Destination versus source. Okay, next step. We will not be enabling tenant to tenant coexistence, so leave that unchecked. You can save and go to summary. Save your project. And now we're ready to auto discover items. This will allow Migration Wiz to go into your source tenant and search the mailboxes and pull them into BitTitan. So start auto discover. And depending on the number of mailboxes, this could take a little while. Auto discover has completed. Now we import the items. And you'll be able to see all the mailboxes that it found. Remember, when you're setting up your source endpoint and your destination endpoint, make sure the admin user is licensed. So if you have some issues here, it could be because it's not licensed. We're going to change the domain address because they're both going to be the same at this point and they're both going to say your vanity domain. I don't have a vanity domain, so it's just using the on Microsoft. If you have bmopro.com here, it'll be bmopro.com here and you would change it. So I'll give you the example. This is what it would look like when you're done. The vanity domain still exists on GoDaddy and does not exist on the destination. You would obviously change this after you've moved your domain over if you're running another pass. That change will be reflected in the email addresses, the domain portion. Now you're ready to verify your credentials. So you need to select the mailboxes that you're going to migrate, which would be all, probably not your admin account, so you could get rid of that, but I'm in this case just going to do one for time. And then you're going to verify the credentials to make sure BitTitan has access to that mailbox. No data is migrated at this point. And you'll sit and wait once it's submitted. When it shows verified, we can move to the next step. There's a refresh button up here that you can hit if you are impatient. We're going to perform a pre-stage migration. And that will do a first pass pull mail only over and for a certain amount of time. And this will save us, we'll do another pass later that's a full migration, but it will be a delta. So whatever's pulled in here, it won't try to pull that in again. It'll just pull in the remainder. So here's where they're going to ask you to buy licenses and you do need a license for every mailbox that you're migrating based on what you selected over here. It will calculate how many you have to purchase. It will take you over to their store.
and you will put the quantity of your license in and buy now. So you've purchased the license, you're ready to do the pre-stage, or it should send you back to the pre-stage license screen. I didn't buy the licenses, so I'm going back. We're assuming I purchased the licenses. Select what to migrate, you're going to select mail. And here's where you can go back and say the number of days. So this is your time saver. The standard is 90 days and you could schedule it if you wanted to. And once the migration is started, once it's complete, you will see if there's any errors on the mailboxes and then use the bit Titan help to help solve the errors. One thing to note, this is new. They have alerted that since Microsoft has built basic authentication on several tenants, or move them to modern authentication, there could be an issue and you may get some errors. So they do have recommended steps to complete if that is the case. This is what the error would look like. It's an un unauthorized error. We've completed the pre-cutover tasks in GoDaddy. The pre-cut over tasks in Microsoft 365 destination and perform the pre-stage migration pass. We notified the users that there's going to be downtime. So now that the users are kicked out, we're going to whip through these tasks over here. And we're going to go ahead and complete step 11 and 12 together. We're going to run PowerShell in the admin context. First, we must import the module MS Online and then connect to the MSL service. It's going to prompt us for credentials, and we are on the GoDaddy side, so you're going to enter your admin at the net. Microsoft on Microsoft.com and the password. After connecting, we're going to run a command get msol domain so that you can see the domains that are registered on GoDaddy. The goal of this step is to remove the custom domain from all the user aliases and to put the on Microsoft dot com domain into their aliases because remember we are going to remove this custom domain from GoDaddy. We'll run the command to load the list of users from our custom domain so that you can see the users that are using the custom domain on the GoDaddy tenant. And then you can run the same command and change the domain name to the godaddy.onmicrosoft.com and then you can see which users are set to that. We can rerun this after we replace all these with this run this command again and verify that all these have been changed. Go ahead and refer to the blog or the ebook for the script. That's going to go ahead and do the domain replacement for their UPNs. This is it. And you're going to replace this with, in our case, bmoprodemo.com and then your net dot on microsoft.com account and when that completes then you should be able to run this command again and verify there should be no users with your vanity domain and then you can run it with the on microsoft and you should be able to see all the users have an on microsoft.com upn step 12 you're just going to check to make sure directory synchronization is not enabled on godaddy and you can run this command 
copy it from our ebook or blog. In this case, it is false, so we don't need to do anything further. If it did say true, you're going to run this command, and that would set it to false. Easiest PowerShell script of the day. The moment you've been waiting for, we're going to remove Federation with GoDaddy, delete the vanity domain reference in Exchange Online, if there's any SMTP addresses using the vanity domain, we're going to remove those. And then finally, we're going to remove the vanity domain entirely from GoDaddy. Copy the command from the blog or the ebook. And we're using this command to convert federated domain to managed. In our case, it's bmoprodemo.com, but this is your vanity domain. Once you've run the command, you can run get msl domain and verify that both your domains are now managed. You should show no domain as federated. That was step 13 on to step 14. This could be done in the UI. If you just have a few users, you could actually go in and look at their aliases and manually change them. But here's the script to go ahead and do that. So for the few users that you're going to change manually, if you don't want to run the PowerShell script, you can go in the admin.microsoft.com, individually select the users, go to edit exchange properties, and then under email address, you can see the SMTP address set here. The goal would be to remove the SMTP vanity domain address because we're going to move the vanity domain over to Microsoft 365 shortly. Here's the script. You can copy it from the blogger ebook that you can run to rip through all of your accounts and remove the vanity domain SMTP address. And finally, step 15, simple command to remove the vanity domain entirely from GoDaddy. So you've defederated it, turn it into managed, You've changed all of the references to the domain name in the email aliases and UPNs to the on Microsoft domain, and you should be ready to remove it. If this command does not work, then you need to investigate if there's a mailbox still using the vanity domain. We're getting there. Right now, we are going to go back into our new tenant on the Microsoft 365 destination. And we're going to add the vanity domain and update the DNS. You verified up here on step one that you could verify access to the DNS. So let's go ahead with those steps. Log into your admin account on GoDaddy. We're going to go to settings, domains, and then we're going to add a domain and we're going to put our vanity domain in here. And then use this domain. You're going to add a text record in the domain DNS record, so select that. And it's going to show you the records that you need to enter in DNS. Copy those, go into your DNS, and enter them. Once you've updated the text record in your DNS, you're going to wait a minute, and then you're going to go back into the Microsoft 365 Verify Domains, and then click on Verify. And then you're going to be prompted by the Update DNS Settings page, and you're going to select, I'll add the DNS records myself. And then it will give you all the records that you need to update in DNS. 
So flip over to your DNS again and update them accordingly. Flip back to Microsoft 365 and once done, click the refresh button until you get the message that all DNS records are correct and there are no errors. So your DNS has propagated and now you are ready to update step 17. The UPNs to the vanity domain, remember we did that over here. On the source, we updated the UPNs to on Microsoft.com. Now we're going to go ahead in the destination and up them to your custom vanity domain. So if you closed your PowerShell window, you're going to want to import module MS Online. Then you're going to want to connect MSL service. And it's going to prompt you for credentials and you're going to enter your credentials on the destination tenant, the admin one. So you're going to run the get MS exchange online user domain name and your vanity domain. And at this point, You're going to get the list of users with that domain, and then you're going to rerun it with the onmicrosoft.com. At this point, it technically should be reversed, but the way I have my data, I've already done it, but you shouldn't see any users here. And then here you will see everybody is probably listed with the onmicrosoft.com. The next step. We're going to go ahead and run the script to um, put the vmoprodemo.com domain into the UPNs. And here's the script you can copy from the ebook or the blog that you're going to use to go ahead and change the UPN for your destination users to your vanity domain. You're ready to test some email delivery. And I'm just going to tell you what to do here. You would go into the destination Microsoft 365 portal, users, active users, and then select a user and reset its password. And then you're going to go ahead and open in, in private window, log in as that user, and then send an email to the account from your either your personal account or your work account. And then go ahead and make sure that the user has received the email. We will run a full migration pass. And note, if a lot of time goes by after you do and you're concerned about possible missing emails, you could run it again. And note that you also are going to change the domain in BitTitan to match this because you have moved your vanity domain over. We're going to log back into BitTitan again. And we are ready to run that full migration pass. So you should have saved your project. And you can go into your project. Now remember, we moved the domain over, so right now, of course, I don't have these exactly like yours is going to be, but right now, put for your source the net.org domain because your vanity domain doesn't exist over here anymore, and the destination is going to be your vanity domain. And to do that, you're going to click on the globe. And that is where you're going to basically switch And these will actually all say net and then the random numbers dot on Microsoft.com. All right. And then you're going to save and close it. And once you do that, then you're going to run the full migration pass. And in order to do that, you have to select the users first that you're going to migrate, deselect any that you aren't migrating, and then 
select full migration pass. And once you do that, then you're just going to wait over here for the status to show um, that it has completed. And this, remember, is the refresh button. So you can just keep refreshing to see them all go. We are on step 20. User password reset. Now we just reset one password for the email delivery, but we're going to go ahead and reset the password for all the users. You can do this through a PowerShell script, or you can just go into the admin center, select all and reset their passwords. So I come in here, select the users, be careful. You don't want to select yourself and then go ahead and reset password. And when you do that, you can go ahead and set a strong password. And then once you do that, email the info to yourself. And then that will be the password you're going to communicate to the users for the post migrations. We will do step 21 and 22. Enable self-service password reset. And then we're going to re-enable the security defaults. Go to portal.azure.com. Azure Active Directory. Scroll down till you see password reset. You're going to select all and then save. While we're in here, we're going to go ahead and enable the baseline security defaults, reverse what we did in step three. So Azure Active Directory, properties, scroll down, manage security defaults, and there's where you're going to enable them and save. Now your users will be prompted for MFA. The last step before the post migration steps, enable S DKIM, SPF, and DMARC as security strategy to prevent email spoofing. Head on over to our cybersecurity blog at bmopro.com to learn how to complete this step. If you're just wore out of this entire process and you want BMO, to handle your email security, please contact us. We are happy to help. Mm -hmm.